Hey guys, this is Ron. In this lab, we're going to talk about EIGRP and path selection. So EIGRP can use a number of different metrics uh, to determine what is the best path through the network. So just eyeballing uh, the network in front of you, uh, it should seem obvious that the best path between R1 and R4 would be through this connection here, right? Because that's either going to be 10 megs, 100 megs, maybe even a gigabit, right? But the path through here uh, is a serial link, and those are typically a whole lot slower. Uh, maybe you only have 64K, 256K, so on and so forth. But e either way, uh, they rarely get over a few megs. Um, so this should always be the better path, right? And so e EIGRP will even say, hey, this, this is a better path. And the way that it does that uh, is it uses a couple of different things. It can use bandwidth, the load on the link, the delay across the link, the re reliability of the link, as well as the MTU size. Now we call these the K values. Um, and so EIGRP uses these K values in a formula as you can see to determine uh, what is the um, the distance to that remote network so we call this the advertised distance if R3 is telling R4 about a network this is the advertised distance and then R4 runs its own calculation uh, based on how uh, far away R3 is from R4 and figures out okay so even though R3 said this is the distance, my actual feasible distance is, you know, number X, right? And so it'll use that new feasible distance to determine what is the best pathway to get to that network. Now, I've also listed these this column right here, so this 10100, and this basically means that by default, EIGRP will use a 1 in place of K1. It will use a zero in place of K2, so on and so forth. And so you can see that some of the formula ends up getting zeroed out. So uh, load isn't taken into consideration by default. MTU size is not taken into consideration by default. Same with reliability. So the only things by default that are taken, to consider, taken into consideration is bandwidth and delay. So when we need to make adjustments to, uh, to force EIGRP to use one path over the other, we typically do it with bandwidth and delay. Now we could go in and manually change uh, this K value, but what you'll find in the real world is that that is rarely, if ever, done, right? So in... In all of my time uh, doing networking, I've never run across uh, someone who has uh, had to adjust their k-value, right? So I've seen it in labs to demonstrate some concept, but but realistically speaking, it it just doesn't happen. So I would avoid uh, adjusting these values um, in order to meet some weird uh, network uh, parameter. Um, or just whatever you're trying to accomplish with it. Instead, I would go back and look at your actual design because bandwidth and delay should be all you need on a, on a typical network to make those adjustments. Now, I've programmed up these routers already with their IP addresses. And what I've got for you is something a little bit different that causes a little bit of confusion as to which uh, pathway is the best. Instead of running EIGRP directly on these lengths, what I'm trying to do is build EIGRP from R1 to R4. Uh, so I want R1 and R4 to become neighbors. And to do that, I've basically built tunnels. So I built a tunnel in this direction, and I've built a tunnel in this direction. So if I bring up, um, bring up my devices, We'll first look to see, okay, are we running the default K values? So if I do a show IP protocols, what I'll find is these EIGRP metric weights. 
And so I see that K1 is in fact 1, K3 is in fact 1, and the rest are set to 0. All right. So I know my K values are correct. And if my K values were different um, from my distant end, I'm fairly certain they don't they won't build uh, a neighbor relationship that's one of those things that, that just kind of screws up the whole process and so if they don't agree on what the K value should be they shouldn't become neighbors well I've left mine at default as you should and instead I'm going to use uh, bandwidth and delay uh, to make my adjustments now you would think that because EIGRP or because the router knows that this is a better length than this and we can kind of verify that if I do a show uh, interface FA00 what I'll find is okay there's an MTU size here there's a bandwidth size and a delay right so this is roughly what this is a 10 meg link um, in a delay of a thousand uh, microseconds. So if I run the same thing, but this time look at serial one zero, what I'll find is that there is in fact a bandwidth of only 256k instead of 10 megs, and there's 20,000 microseconds instead of the uh, 1,000 microseconds that I had. All right, so clearly these two links are different, uh, and serial one zero therefore should be the worse, uh, uh, a worse path than FA zero zero. However, again, I've built tunnels from R one right down to R four. So if we look at that, show run interface T zero. Very simple tunnel. All it says is, hey, I've given it an IP address. My tunnel source is FastEther00, and my tunnel destination is 24.4. Now, 24.4 is this link right here. So I basically said my source is right here, and my destination is right here. And if I look at my second tunnel, tunnel 1, my tunnel source is serial 10 and destination is 34.4. So tunnel source, tunnel destination, right? So I've built a tunnel that goes across here, and I've built a tunnel that goes across here. And now I've set up EIGRP to run on both of those tunnels. So if I do a show IP EIGRP neighbor, what you'll find is I have two neighbor relationships. They're both uh, going to R4, right? So 1.4 is the length from 1 to 4. 1.4 is the length from 1 to 4. So that's how I keep my IP straight. But either way, so tunnel 0 and tunnel 1. So I have neighbor relationships on both of these, right? And so they've both been up for a little while. And if I do a show IP EIGRP, uh, or let's do a show IP route, I have a, let's do this by EIGRP, so make it a little easier to look at. Router 4 has a loopback address on it, 4.4.4.4. What you'll notice here is there are two entries for that network, one across tunnel 1, and one across tunnel zero. So EIGRP is a little bit uh, confused as to which one is the better path. It feels uh, that they're both uh, an equal distance away. So what it's doing is it's load balancing across both links. And while that may sound exciting, you know, hey, I'm getting uh, greater bandwidth utilization because now you know this this link isn't sitting empty I'm actually sending some traffic across it and some traffic across this one and, and like I said while it sounds great the reality is is because this is a a worse link the overall performance that the users will see is uh, is gonna be you know degraded right 
because instead of having a full 10, uh, 10 megs to go across, uh, periodically they're having to go across a 256K link, which is going to cause issues. So we don't want that. We only want tunnel 1 then to be a backup if tunnel 0 goes down. If I do a show IP <clears throat> EIGRP topology, I can kind of look as well that there's an advertised distance and there's a feasible distance. And so when EIGRP uh, made its calculations, it decided that um, the distance uh, across these tunnels was the same. Uh, and therefore, because they're the same, it's load balancing across it and we now have two successor routes. Well, why is that? I mean, we we already looked at the fact that you know the the links themselves look worse. We can tell that the the serial link is worse. However, when we look at the the tunnel, so show interface T zero. I have this really low bandwidth and this high delay. and I have a matching low bandwidth and a matching high delay, right? So to EIGRP, again, there, it, it's an equal cost. You know, regardless of which path I choose, they both have the same bandwidth and they both have the same uh, delay. So when it runs uh, through this calculation, again, only looking at bandwidth and delay, it comes up with the same feasible distance for each one. And that's obviously not what we want. So instead what we can do is go in and adjust those sorts of things. So if I go into interface T0, I could say bandwidth. If I do a question mark, it's going to look for it in kilobits. All right, so if I adjust the bandwidth there, and I adjust the bandwidth there, if I come back, do show IP EIGRP topology, notice this time that the feasible distances are different right so I adjusted the uh, bandwidth here to a higher amount which therefore lowered the feasible distance and so this now becomes the successor route so now I only have one successor so if I do a do show IP EIGRP uh, sorry do show IP route EIGRP now I only have a single route to 4.4.4 in my routing table. So I'm no longer load balancing across them. I will always take tunnel 0 unless tunnel 0 is unavailable. So if I do a shut, eventually uh, my EIGRP neighbor uh, relationship goes down. Do show IP route EIGRP. And now I'm going to tunnel one, right? So now I have a failover scenario, un unlike what I had before where I was load balancing across them. So if I do a no shut, I'll build a new adjacency, and I'm back up routing to 4.4.4 .4 over tunnel zero. Okay, so that was uh, adjusting the bandwidth in order to affect our feasible distance, which therefore uh, favored one uh, tunnel over the other. Now, I've seen scenarios where um, maybe I'm going through two different routers or I'm going through two different modems, you know, what have it. Um, so both of, of my bandwidths um, were the same. So regardless of which which direction I went, 
my bandwidth was the same. So instead, I can adjust my delay. And so I can make one delay favorable over another delay. So let's do this. So interface T0, which I believe I'm already on, delay tens of microseconds. Now, I have never actually sat down to figure out um, you know, the actual delay that, that I should be putting in here. Instead, I know I'm only using it to make one path look better over the next path. So it's up to you what you really want to put in here. But in my case, I'll put 100,000 in this one. And I'll do interface T1, and I'll put a delay of 200, 1, 2, 3, All right? So I have a lower delay in tunnel 0 and a higher delay in tunnel 1. So if they were uh, equal bandwidth, so if I go back to T0 bandwidth, we originally start out with 9K, right? So interface T... Um, one bandwidth also 9k so if I do a uh, do show interface t0 I'm back to my bandwidth of 9k I've adjusted my delay I'm back to bandwidth 9k on tunnel one but this time I'm at a delay of 200 uh, thousand do show IP -E -I -G -R -P topology notice here I'm still favoring tunnel zero again because this one has a lower delay this one has a higher delay so again it comes up with a higher number uh, for its feasible distance so I still prefer tunnel zero right so even if you know that your um, your two tunnels are going across the path that has the same bandwidth, you can still use the delay to again make that. Uh, in a sense, it's just a logical adjustment. You're you're not really adding a delay to to uh, packets that might go out. You're just saying, hey, there's you know EIGRP. There's going to be roughly this much delay on the link. So. Again, when it does its calculation, it figures out, okay, which one is the better path. So there you go. Sometimes the RGRP can get a little confused as to the path, but you can, you can make an adjustment to the delay or you can make an adjustment to the bandwidth to, to uh, favor one path over the other uh, so that your, your uh, actual path to those re remote networks actually makes sense. If I hadn't made an adjustment here, Again, I'm, I would have been load balancing across a 256K link when I've got this link over here that's a couple megs and should always be used, right? So I hope you found this informative. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I know I've used it a number of times um, throughout my career. Um, small little adjustments, but makes a big difference uh, to your user. So thanks for watching.